Hey guys, welcome to the wild side and this week we're talking all about the ball python. A very popular pet item, but a python nonetheless. So let's slither on the wild side of ball pythons. Alright folks, here it is. This is Cairo, and Cairo is a ball python. Now these animals, they max out at around four to six feet. And when I say six feet, that's typically females, and that's in a very rare instance. For most of the time, they stay around that four to five foot range, with male snakes being a lot smaller than female snakes. Now of course, this animal, native to the continent of Africa, and if you like to find them, you have to go to West Africa and travel into the central sides of Africa. Once you get to the Nile River, you can head south, down to South Sudan and over to Sierra Leone. That's where you can find these animals typically on the ground or underground, hiding under rocks, hiding under logs, hiding in holes, and even occupying some formerly housed termite mounds where they stay safe from that hot African heat. Now, they are a cold-blooded reptile which means they need the sun to supercharge their body and give them the energy to move throughout the African savanna. But too much heat can actually be really bad for the reptile. So in the hotter parts of the day, they seek those cool underground chambers to regulate their body temperature. Now, unlike you and I, we sweat. I'm sweating right now. That's how we cool our bodies down. Dogs pant, uh, hippos get underwater, rhinos wallow, snakes, they have to go underground to help keep that heat off of their body. It also is the best way for them to stay safe from their predators. Now what wants to eat a ball python? <laughs> Basically anything that can. A lot of birds of prey especially would love to grab a snake like this as a snack. What does a ball python eat? Well a lot of times they're eating small mammals such as rats and mice, uh, different things like that, shrews. Male snakes in Africa also have been known to have the tendency to eat birds at high frequency. These animals are constrictors, so they wrap their body around their prey, they squeeze all the air out of their prey, and then they swallow their prey down completely whole. Now how does a snake jaw work? Well, everyone at home, do this with me. One hand like that, and one hand like that. Now our jaws are boring, only the bottom part opens. Wah, 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 wah. But a snake jaw, the bottom opens and the top opens, and then they can stretch their head four times larger than itself, and then it splits at the bottom, splits at the top, and then they use those four different zones of their jaw with about 100 fish hook shaped teeth to grab onto the prey and begin working the prey down into their body. Now, once they get the prey past the shoulders, then the muscles take over and begin to bring the prey deeper into the digestive tract. Now, depending on the size of the animal, depends on the time of digestion. If they eat something really, really large, it could take them months to digest. If they eat something small, it could be a week or so. But typically for a normal sized prey item, for this animal, it could be a small rodent, it's about 10 days of digestion. Now, how do they find their prey? Well, simply, they can either find it with their vision, which they don't have eyelids, so they can never close their eyes, which is nice. You never miss anything when you don't close your eyes. They also use their sense of smell. Everyone at home, stick out your tongue. Taste the air. Now I'm not tasting anything. Oh no. I've been vaccinated, so that's not the problem. Oh, it's because we don't taste the air with our tongue. We use our olfactory glands, our nose, to breathe in those smells. Well, this snake is gonna use that forked tongue to taste the air, bring its tongue back into its mouth, and inside of their mouth, they have what's called the Jacobson's organ. These are two holes in the roof of their mouth. It's a sensory organ, which allows them to kind of smell by taste. They put their tongue near those holes and it tells them, oh, that's a rock, that's a mouse, that's a log. Ooh, that's scent from another snake. This must be their zone. Now these animals also have some heat seeking pits. Can you see those little dots right near the mouth? Those heat seeking pits allow these animals to almost see an infrared, find the heat signature of a rat or mouse or whatever prey item they're going after, hone in and strike. 
with lightning speed. And that's how these animals actually find their prey, uh, especially when they're hunting in the darkness at night. They'll use their sense of smell or their sense of vision. Now, my friends here at Zoo Imagination are an incredible group of people. They rescue, rehabilitate, and then use these animals for outreach and education. But in February here in Texas, the snowpocalypse, the great freeze, the ice age of Texas hit. And a lot of the animals here were affected, including Cairo. Zoo Imagination was without power for five days. Five days, five days. And this animal needs heat. They ran on generators donated by friends. They ran on generators and trying to find fuel. When fuel would run out, they'd have to try to drive through the ice to get to fuel that was running low in all gas and filling stations. We have to help Zoo Imagination. If you're so inclined and would like to help this nonprofit organization that is so gracious to us, please click the link in the bio right here on YouTube and go donate to Zoo Imagination. Help them get more funds to care for more animals and be better prepared when a natural disaster that is unprecedented strikes once more. Folks, that's all for this week here on The Wild Side. As always, please click subscribe right here on this video. Give us a thumbs up. And the most important one, share this video. Click the share button, copy the link, and share it to your social media. Share it with your family and friends because we want to share as much news as we can about Zoo Imagination and the incredible animals like this ball python that they care for each and every day. Until next time, everyone, stay wild. Conservation definitely rules. And we'll see you next week where we highlight yet another of your favorite species. Until then, see you later, everybody. You see what I did there? <laughs> yeah, you get it. Bye.